Thank you. Uh, my name is Julie Dushak. I belong to the group called Women Who Run With Scissors. We've been in business for uh, 23 years now, and we're relatively small. We're only 14 members, and we're a closed group. So while I can't invite you to join us, I can invite you to join us for like a class or something like that. So we enjoy doing a lot of things. Um, I th we have a little description of ourselves those same irreverent qualities that got us into trouble in grade school are now finally working to our advantage as we blend our personal visions with the exploration of both traditional and contemporary surface design techniques. So uh, we just, we're out to have fun. We're out to have exhibit opportunities. And we have discovered how to put on really nice classes and, and go into like, a, we had a show recently for three months at the Neville Museum recently. And I loved it when that show came down in like 20 minutes. We're done, down, out of there. And the, and the curator was just standing there like, <laughs> as, it, as it leaves. So you can be tremendously organized when you're working with other people as, as you want your art shown and you want it you know, demonstrated. So I'm very happy to be here. Hi, I'm Jane Hostetler. I'm representing the Wisconsin Visual Artists tonight. I also have a studio in De Pere, so I'll kind of tell that as well. If you haven't come by to see us, come on by. We're a collaborative group of artists that work together, so another way to be a part of a community. But tonight I'm here for Wisconsin with Visual Artists. I am the chapter chair for our Northeast chapter, so it is a statewide organization. There is a Madison area chapter, a Milwaukee area chapter, and a Northeast Wisconsin chapter. Um, so basically the advantage to being a part of a statewide organization is that you get uh, exposure to a lot of different arts in other communities around the state, available shows that you might want to enter, a way to network with other artists throughout the state. So it's really kind of nice, a little bit bigger venue, but we also offer our chapter meetings, which is a little bit more local and a little bit more personal, and we get together with different artists each month. Uh, we have a wide area that we draw from, so people come from all over Northeast Wisconsin. So each month, depending on the time of the year, we may have more or less members that can make it to our meetings, but we meet at different uh, studios, different galleries. We talk about different kinds of art. Our artists come from all different mediums, so we're networking with a lot of different kinds of artists rather than one type. I belong to other organizations that are specific to a certain medium, like watercolor or fiber arts or things like that, which are great. But this way you kind of get to lap over a little bit and find out what other people are doing. So it is an organization that you can join. There is a monthly, or there is a membership uh, fee that you can join, but with that membership you get a quarterly magazine, which is statewide news about what other artists are doing, what other, uh, gallery shows are going on, whatever the opportunities there are for you to get involved in. There's also a monthly newsletter which is more local, about local artists within your area that talk about what they're doing, stay connected. And the biggest thing that our, our members really say that they are a part of this is they want to network, talk to other people, and again, also have the opportunity to get outside the area and be in the Wisconsin venue as well. So if you're interested in joining and you want more information, I have some information up on the table like most of us will. So just let me know um, and that's that's about it. I'll pass that on. I stink at holding these. I have a pretty carrying voice, so I'm not going to use the microphone. Um, my name is Stacey Burkhart. I am actually the founder of SAGE, which is a 501c3 nonprofit that focuses um, on community outreach to the arts uh, in the Green Bay area. I'm just going to read our um, recently adapted mission statement. We operate as a platform for local artists and creatives to support each other and their community. We emphasize inclusivity, accessibility, quality, collaboration, and encouragement as it pertains to art and the right to artistic expression. Um, we are also uh, identify across all artistic mediums. I myself am a fiber artist. Um, we have painters. We have henna artists. We have uh, people that work with natural materials. I'm just naming the people that are in the room right now. <laughs> um, but we really focus um, on emphasizing a family atmosphere. We meet monthly. 
um, first Monday of the month, and then we just talk about what we can do. We're a very action-based organization. Um, so what we can do in the community as far as bringing arts, bringing artistic opportunities, again, that accessibility. Uh, one of our biggest platforms right now is what we identify as Creative Community, which is a free open studio space for anyone uh, in the Green Bay area to join us, to make art. We don't give any direction as far as what you make, but you have 100% access to supplies that are donated by our artist members. Um, we don't have a membership fee. You can join us at any point in time. You can come and go as you please. Um, but what we do as a platform um, for placemaking for artists in the Green Bay community um, is I reach out to find opportunities for artists to be present. And in order for you to be present in the things that SAGE affords um, its members, we ask for your time. Um, so in a given quarter, SAGE members are asked to volunteer five hours. That can be sitting in creative community, um, just being there, being present, um, offering options, um, showing people where things are. Um, it can mean helping us move things. It can mean being a part of community outreach um, because we work with local nonprofits that are service oriented. Um, but otherwise, we're just a space for you to gather um, with like-minded individuals. <coughs> we kind of identify ourselves as misfits <laughs> in the sense that we are at all different levels from the beginning artist to the fine artist. Mostly that beginning level, I'm not going to lie there. Um, but it's been an awesome opportunity for people to inspire each other. Um, so if you are that fine artist and you're looking to uh, inspire somebody that's just beginning, uh, we tend to um, focus on an age category of, I don't know, 18 to 40 perhaps. Um, but those, those younger folks really benefit from the space that we provided for them. Thank you. Hi. My name's Linda Busalaki, and I'm part of the Embroiderers Guild of America. And we have a chapter here in Green Bay. This is our 41st year. And we teach any type of embroidery that you would like to do, from hard anger to cross stitch to needlepoint. You name it, we do it. Our chapter here meets monthly, and it's on a uh, Thursday night, the third, fourth, third or fourth, third, fourth, fourth, fourth Thursday of the month. And we have monthly meetings, and we try to do different things each month. We sometimes have a bigger project going. Right now we have a group doing what we call a group correspondence course that comes out of National, because we are part of National, and it's a 501c3 organization. And so we can get uh, courses that way and teach people here versus going to seminars. We also, for the region, we're part of the Great Lakes region, we have a region seminar once a year. This year's region seminar is going to be in Appleton and at the same time I should mention that the national exhibit of the Embroiderers Guild of America will be at the Trout Museum starting April, I forget the dates now, I can check it for you, April 3rd or 4th, something like that and it'll run through August. Um, and I'm happy to take anybody down who wants to see it because it's a fair, I was at the opening of this exhibit and this is the last stop in Appleton is the last stop for this particular exhibit and then they'll start another one in another year or so. But we're an open group, we have a Facebook page and we welcome anybody, anybody can come to a meeting. If you decide to join, after, after two times of being there, you either join or you don't, but we offer anything that you would like to learn in the needle arts, anything to do with a needle, we love it. There you go. So do I. <laughs> My name is Sandy Melroy, and we know many of you, and we know all of us. <laughs> and this is a real small town. <laughs> um, I do think the arts have come along a long ways, and through these arts organizations, I love it. I love to be a part of them. I'm specifically a part of the Green Bay Art Colony tonight, and the Green Bay Art Colony was established 105 years ago by eight women. Hence, in that 105th year legacy and our heritage, we have stuck to the same principles that these are a group of fine artists that are diverse in their mediums. It's a juried in group. So you do have to petition according to some of our restrictions or our standards, if you will. Um, it's a fine level, higher art, but diverse. And yet we encourage you to exhibit your work have exhibited your work, and then what do you do? You keep growing, right? So within our membership, our mission is still the same, 105 years, and it is the oldest existing women's art club in Green Bay, and in fact, one of the oldest in the state of Wisconsin. 
very proud of that. As an organization for artists, our objectives are to promote art interest in the community, to publicly exhibit artwork created by its members, and to promote the study and participation in art activities by its members. How does that happen? It varies, depends on what opportunities come. We love to network with other groups. We love to share our talents through either organizing workshops or certainly through displays and then docenting through those displays to the public. Our number one primo proud spot to exhibit is at the Green Bay, excuse me, at the Neville Public Museum, which I know, isn't that cool? <laughs> we love that anybody is exhibiting at the Neville Museum. A history that eight years ago these women started the Green Bay Art Colony, they got their minds together at that point and through fundraising with other partners in the community, they raised the funds to start the Neville Public Museum. So through that history, the Green Bay Art Colony has an annual exhibit and it's up right now through March 29th, so I encourage you to go see it. Um, we are very supportive of artists at all levels. We know that none of us came out of the shoot being fine artists. And we also know, we hope, that none of us are stopping with what we're doing. We learn from each other and very proud of the networking, even amongst these groups up here, we share with each other. We encourage each other at all levels. Um, some of our favorite, uh, we've just done a little review of our members of why did you join and what does it mean to you? So as a arts organization, sometimes when you join, you're like, could I get in, could I get in? When you get in, it's like, why do you stay in? So it really does help me as um, a longer member now than I was at one point. But here's what some of the people said as of the last month, to promote art in the community, to exhibit, that show your work, right? Um, to promote con continuing study of art. And this is through member sharing and we have guest artists. We meet once a month, we meet nine months of the year, and we invite other artists to come in and demonstrate and educate along with us. Camaraderie of other artists. I think that's why you're all here tonight, right? This bonds our community. Networking with quality artists, talk about your own work, have critiques by members. If you're doing your own art at home in your studio, who do you go to with, a, with an opinion, not so that they can, oh, I either want to buy it or I don't. That critiquing is really important within our safe zone. Um, and people come at it differently from different mediums. Motivation, inspiration, again, if you're surrounded by artists and you see someone working constantly or not working at all, well, I know which one inspires me. I know which one sometimes I could fall in. Um, work with professional women, uh, just exposed to different diverse art forms, and it really is an opportunity for another networking level, even with other art groups, simply to have a calling card of, I am with a group, and then it opens doors to others, we think. So there we go. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tracy Reeb, and I'm representing the Evergreen Quilt Guild and a group called Fiber Artisans. So Fiber Artisans is a little bit smaller group. I think we have somewhere between 25 and 30 members. And we do all kinds of different fiber art. Some people do painting, some people do quilting, some people do mixed media. So we meet monthly. Actually, we met this morning, so our, our meetings are the second Tuesday of the month. And we just have a variety of, of different programs. It's open to anybody in the community. We just started our new year. And a lot of times our members are the ones that put on the programs for us. So some of the programs that, we, that we've had um, in January, we played different music and closed our eyes and just listened to the music and decide and kind of envisioned what was that music telling us and how, what kind of art could we create. And then we asked our members to create an art piece for that and bring it to the meeting today and, and two of them did that, so that was fun. Um, today we got to see um, a, a slideshow of a lot of qu beautiful, beautiful quilts from the Road to California quilt show that was in January. Um, we've done bookmaking and uh, about about once a year or every other year for sure, we usually bring in a professional, an, uh, another artist 
And um, in sep last September, we brought in Susan Pernimark, and we did a lot of painting on fabric. And it, it was really fun. It kind of brought us back to kindergarten, in my opinion. And we were just having, having a lot of fun doing that. So that's a little bit about fiber artisans. Uh, then the other group is Evergreen Quilt Guild. I'm currently the president of that group. And our meetings are the second Tuesday right now. So I'm missing the meeting tonight. I'm missing the board meeting. I had to assign all my, all my duties out to somebody else. And uh, we meet monthly. So it's the second Tuesday of the month is fun day for me. That's what I call it, because I get to go to Fiber Artisans and Evergreen Quilt Guild. So the, the Quilt Guild started back in the late 70s. So we have been around for quite a while. We were meeting in people's homes. Then we were meeting um, downtown at Port Plaza Mall. Um, and then we've been at various churches. And we are a group that has three three goals. One is to teach um, people about about quilting. One is to um, we do a lot of um, community outreach. W um, we make not just quilts for people, but we, we do make a lot of quilts. So we have service quilts um, for like some of the homeless shelters. We do, um, I can't, um, qu smaller quilts for um, people in wheelchairs. We do uh, um, pillowcases for St. Vincent's Hospital. We do smaller quilts for the beds at St. Vincent's for the children's, for the pediatrics ward. And then we do, uh, and, and then soldier quilts. So we do a lot of veterans quilts. And we've had a couple veterans even come and um, to our meetings and, and thank us. Um, so it's, it's, been, it's been wonderful to be able to give back to our community the way that we do it. And then we also have it, um, education. So um, we have about four or five workshops throughout the year from different artists that we bring in. Some of them are our own members um, and some of them are national teachers. And then every other year we do a quilt show. And this um, coming up in March um, is our quilt show. And um, I'm gonna add Linda that we have a show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a show for the Embroiders Guild. I'm a member of that member of that group too. So uh, we do have a show a couple weeks after um, um, Evergreen's show at the Botanical Gardens, actually. So um, our show is going to be at Green Bay Community. And again, we have um, our members and non-members can show their quilts. Um, what's really unique about our, sh our quilt show is that we bring in um, certified judges. So they judge our quilts and we give out ribbons and we give out prize money, not, not a ton, but we give out some. And if you enter a quilt in the show, you actually, um, we have a judges tour the next day, and that is another part of our education that we do with with um, Evergreen, and that the judges come around, go around to all the quilts, and point out different things, the positive things, and some of the things um, that could be improved, and it is really interesting. Some of the things that you will learn about not maybe even your your own quilt and but also some of the other quilts and then again we can improve and we've got some fabulous quilters and we do all kinds we do tra we've got traditional quilters we've got art quilters we've just everything so that's pretty much what we do for the these two groups hi i'm sylvia jensen i'm with mosaic arts and Mosaic Arts actually started in 1979 as the Northeast Wisconsin Arts Council. I was hoping to be the oldest organization here, but we're not. I think Sandy beat us. Um, Sandy's on our board of directors, so I can, I can give her. Um, anyway, so we've been around since 1979. They um, created the group because at that time, Art Street wasn't in existence. There was really no group that that kind of served as an umbrella for the arts and cultural scene here in Green Bay. 
So they banded together, and I believe the first Art Street was 1981, 1982. So that was the start of this. But really the mission is arts advocacy and really promoting um, the artists and cultural organizations in the community. Right now we are a staff of 1.75 people. We don't have quite two people, so um, it's a lot. It's a lot to put together Art Street, Artie Gras, um, this year we're organizing Make Music Day, which is an international day of music, so that's new for us. Um, but I think I've only been the executive director for the past year and three weeks, no, seven weeks. And Molly, who is my marketing assistant, um, she's only been with the organization for six months. But what we've learned, because I made um, a conscious effort to spend that first year out in the community asking questions and just listening. You know, what do people need? What do people want from an arts organization? I heard um, a lot of what they feel is lacking and um, some not so good stuff. And, you know, and it just seemed like Mosaic, what I would like to see moving forward is really trying to be more of that kind of maybe an umbrella group, but we are really out here to support everyone. I don't care if you're the beginner group or if you're a fine art artist. Granted, our shows, Artie Gras and Art Street, are both fine art shows, so there is an application process. You are juried in, um, so that won't change. But we really, um, both Molly and I really, and the board want to really focus on um, how do we best represent the artists that are out there because there are so many great artists. Uh, so what does our membership look like? Um, well, we're tweaking that too, but right now for $25 as an individual artist, $25 for the year, you can become a member. And what does that give you? Um, we have a new website as of February, so we're working on developing that and giving the artists a presence. They have their um, art, they can post pictures on that. There's um, contact information there, a biography. So a lot of people come to our site because, I don't know, they must Google it and see arts organization and it comes to us. So we do get those phone calls. Um, other phone calls that we get are, I need an artist to make this. Who can I call? So for our artist members, those are the people that I'm going to call first. Um, I think that's a good investment for that $25 a year if I can hook you up with someone that you can create something for them and, and get paid for it. Um, the other thing we're doing too this year is a lot more programming. In my previous job, I did work with a lot of people who um, were, I guess, underprivileged. They didn't have um, resources. They just were lacking. and. And you see that in the school districts. Schools don't have enough money for their art programming. There's, um, you know, homeless people out there. There's, there's a lot of people out there that don't have the access to the arts. And we all know that the arts can be very therapeutic and healing. So we're going into places like the MICA Center. Um, we're going into local schools. Um, I'm trying to get into a local prison because art is therapeutic. Um, what does that mean? Well, if you're an artist member, we want to pay you to help us execute this programming. And it, we provide the, the coursework, we provide the materials, but because it's just Molly and myself, it's hard to be running around planning these events and also trying to, you know, create and execute this programming too. So that's our plan for this year. Um, Membership, I would say those are probably the benefits right there. The, the uh, website, um, our social media posts, again, if you contact me. And sometimes, you know, if you're not, if your information isn't up on our website or on Facebook or Instagram or wherever you want it to be right away, just give me a little nudge because we might be in the middle of planning something. Um, but our members, uh, are very important to us. Um, again, in Artie Gras, we also have a mosaic gallery. 
um, which is only open to our members. So if you're exhibiting at Artie Gras, um, we also have a separate booth for any members. So you're more than welcome to place um, items there. And it's just another touch point for someone coming through Artie Gras. You know, your contact information is on there. You're in booth 107. So that's just an, uh, another opportunity to sell your, um, your art. So I think that's it. Oh, and Cultural Corner, too. Sorry, I think, yes, we have um, Cultural Corner and the dem demonstrating artists are also a part of Artie Gras and Art Street, a very important part. Um, Aaron will probably get another phone call that I need him to be on TV. So um, these are things where I like to reach out to our members. And because I'm, I'm just the face behind Mosaic Arts, I don't... You know, I'd rather push our artists out there. I don't, I don't really want to be on TV, and it's more important for the artists to get their faces out there and get their messages out there. So, so Stacy, your group, do you have a permanent space? At this time, we don't. Um, it's something that we're uh, working on, but not worried about. Basically, is is where we're at. So uh, we function with Creative Community. Um, we're looking. We didn't do that in January or February. Uh, we look to kickstart that back up in March. Um, but we are actively seeking a permanent space. Uh, one of the things that we struggle with as um, as a nonprofit is focusing on how do we make the money to pay the rent, to um, provide the facility for something like that. When we find greater value in an artist's abilities and their time, so I'm never going to charge a membership fee. I made that commitment when this organization started. Um, and so there's that fine line with being an artist and saying, OK, I want to just, I just want to make art, right? I don't want to have to worry about how to price it. I don't want to have to worry about making the money. And so that mindset coupled with, okay, now we got to figure out where that money is going to come in uh, is, is new for us. So we apply for grants. We're always um, asking for donations. But again, it's not coming from the artist. We definitely believe that the community should be supporting what we're doing. Sorry, I have a lot of applause for the Artisan Center because I know enough of you have been here taking classes and drawing from each other and then their encouragement and as Stacy says, some artists aren't at the level where they're needing to make money. Other artists are. And I do think there's a value in the community knowing the value of art. So I really appreciate the Artisan Center for putting that message out with every class that people take and with every instructor, and I'm happy to be one of their instructors here as well, um, you're very encouraging at all levels, and I think that is growing the arts, and it's growing the appreciation for this community of art. So, and they have a little staff, and they do a huge amount too, so I'm applauding you guys. When we started SAGE, it was literally, I, I try to avoid the whole spiel of how did we get started, because a lot of people have already heard it, but when we started, it was literally, I was working from home, uh, I had moved to Green Bay and I didn't know anyone, I didn't know who to connect with, but I moved with an existing business and I moved with small children and I just wanted to get out of the house and have a sense of self and so I started going to events and connecting with the makers that I saw regularly at different events and opening up that first courageous conversation which Funny enough was, where do you get your beeswax here in Wisconsin? <laughs> because I was making beeswax food wraps, and I reached out to a gal who makes lip balms, right? So there was that. And it turned into she was working from home, and I was working from home. And all of a sudden, we're using the glories of Facebook to talk to each other just to get to know each other. And this conversation grew to have so much value for us as individuals that we said, you know what? We've got to open this up. We've got to open this conversation up to anybody and everybody that would take value from it. Um, and so when you talk about having kids, that's really personal for me, right? Because um, especially when my children were little, it was, I can't go to these meetings because they're at 9 a.m. and I have babies and nobody's going to want to listen to a crying baby at their meeting, right? So we started having our meetings at 6, right? And we had them once a month. But then what we said was no pressure. If you can't make it, that's fine. But we have a social media group, and in that group, we've fostered this energy of you know growing and encouraging each other. So whether it's a funny meme about the arts, or whether it's an upcoming show that you can apply to, or an event that you can be a part of, right? We share all of that. Now that took two years to create that space, 
But by doing so, right, you, you feel supported, right? You feel encouraged to then go make your own space or go do your own thing. Or you feel comfortable that if you're going to go to a SAGE meeting, that you can bring your six-year-old and your eight-year-old. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, I have brought my kids to a lot of things. <laughs> and, um, you know, but, but that you're supported in that, right? Um, and so when it, I, I just say do it. Right. There is there is, you know, if you want to form a sage or and, and use our platform, we're all about that. We actually looked at Appleton last year. Um, so if, if you need that support, we're all about it. If you want to do your own thing, we're all about that, too. You just tell us where we need to where we can and, and help. You know, if somebody says, I love what you're doing, I want to do this where I live. Uh, psh, why not? Right. Why not? Uh, a gal that I just connected with today, she's up in Surgeon Bay. Right. And and as you get to know these people, one of the reasons why we looked at Appleton was because we had members that were down there that were making the drive. And they're like, man, I really want to be a part of this. But this is a strain. And then we look over here to people that are in Green Bay right now that are going, my life is about to transition to Hortonville. And I go, hey, buddy, <laughs> you know, and, and, and they can feel supported in doing that. Now, I will tell you it's a dedication. It is a tireless effort, right? So you form that platform of support right out of the gate, right? You identify the people who resonate with your message. You make your message clear, right? Yeah, and you hold to it. And, and, and the people that it resonates with will support you. I can't emphasize that enough. Like, I'm going to get all choked up and start crying because I have a really great support system. So I think it's purpose. Right? I think it's one thing to make your art and to sit and feel good about what it is that you're making and what it is you're presenting. It's another thing to look at the person across the table that has never, where there's a lot of fiber artists, that has never lifted a sewing needle, right? That has never tied a knot at the end of the thread. And they do that for the first time. Um, you know, uh, it's priceless and uh, you know, somebody in our group shared this quote and I didn't get a chance to share it So I'd like to do it now and it's community is much more than belonging to something It's about doing something together that makes belonging matter and That's that's that it, that is who we are. That's us in a nutshell um, And and so like I said Offering something as simple as creative community, just an open studio with art supplies, no direction whatsoever. So you may have a thread and needle, you might have yarn, you might have paint. Everybody defaults to paint, right? Um, but just watching those people go, what am I supposed to do? That was the other thing that we learned. Not everybody has an artistic mind, right? Not everybody can sit with something in front of them and know what they need to make with that. Right? So if you afford that opportunity and, and you as an artist are there when the, that light bulb goes off, right? Kids, kids are really great about knowing what it is that they want to do at any given moment with whatever art supply that you give them. My kids, it doesn't matter what you put in front of them, they will make a mess with it and then they'll go, it's art, mm -hmm. right? And, and then we, we grow out of that. And we need to be able to get back to that. So it doesn't matter what artistic medium you exercise with right now. We accept all of those. We accept all levels. I think that's important too, right? You have the ability to inspire when you reach that level. You've been doing this for 20 years, what have you. Well, inspire me. Inspire me, table, because I'm a fiber artist, all right? But I was a stuffy maker as of six months ago. I am now a soft sculpture artist. <laughs> <laughs> I have made over 600 stuffed animals in the last four years. I am upgrading. So. Well, and as you say, it's interesting because you, you use the term fiber artisan, and it is amazing what people are doing with needles and threads and, and mm -hmm. cotton fabrics. Mm -hmm. um, there's, I did not know this existed until I saw something on Facebook in Sturgeon Bay. There's, it's actually inside their library, a little Miller Art Museum. Yeah. They've got a little fabric textile display going on right now. Uh, from wool felting to weaving, there are four very large pieces from a fiber artist from New Orleans of a, like a guy running. And as a quilter, you just sit and you know the time and effort it took mm -hmm. to put into that. And in a lot of cases, you would not know that was made 
using fabric. You know. There is a new Door County fiber artist group up there and they're trying to expand and have exhibits and have teachers come in and teach various things. I joined the group last June under the auspices of needlework and it's amazing how many people we've gotten connected with because of this. So that's growing up there. I can't remember the full name of it, but if somebody wants it, I can find it for you. But it is expanding. I think what I get out of the, the interaction with fellow artists are two things. One is what I call creative bounce. I mean, whenever like you have Tuesday mornings and, and I end up going to a different meeting on the final Tuesday of the night, but whenever I go to one of these meetings, I come out more creative and more energized to do work right now um, than, than I had the, the previous week. So that's one issue. And the other issue is just plain, where do you buy supplies and where do you get you know, wool felting needles and, and where do you like to buy your fabric and, and what kind of wonder under do you use and that type of stuff. It is so nice to be able to tap in to other people who are doing similar things. And it doesn't even have to be all that similar, but to find out where you find those art supplies. And I always used to um, poke a little fun at, at painters because I would say, you know what, I've never seen a painting bus go down and visit a a, a convention and come back and talk about how much you bought from the vendors and um, you know because and that's something that fiber art has the ability to do and it's because we've tapped into the whole quilting theme and now all of a sudden we can f we can find our art supplies at national and international shows and it's wonderful so I did, did have a question for you Julie um, so I noticed that like everybody has is like open group, but then you have closed group. So I I saw your exhibit at the Neville, and I was just like, ah, like she was swooning. I was yeah, with her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, how do I well, join? But then you say you're a closed group. Well, how does that work? Or like, is there's no chance for me? <laughs> well. We're a closed group just because we only have 14 members and we will meet sometimes in people's houses, sometimes in, in fairly small rooms. Um, so we just felt like we, we couldn't deal with the size issues. We have very few rules. You know, we take minute notes under protest. Um, but but we're, we're a pretty simple group. On the other hand, I would like to encourage you to think about what you want in a group and think hard about what you want, what you're looking for. Are you looking for, for example, that, that thing in Door County, I'm going with five other people tomorrow as a little field trip. Um, and we sat at the meeting at, at Fiber Artisans and just thought, Who, oh, I wanna go. Um, and we pulled together two cars and we're going tomorrow. So just having that type of connection where you can meet once a month um, means that you can start your own group, and it's not that hard. So when, what? She's, she's my vice president. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it depends on, on what you're doing and what you're looking, you know, many of us, it's amazing how many of us belong to more than one group. Um, and that's, that's kind of interesting. I didn't have that luxury when I was working full time, but now I do. So that's really exciting to me. It's like, oh my gosh, think of all these things that people are doing during the day when I was wasting time at work. So, <laughs> so. so when you bring in, if you bring in, when we did the thing at the church in Eschwaben and the fishbone thing, was that shared with women who run with scissors or fiber artisans? Uh, that fiber gal? Artisans. Okay. So we share, we do share. So if you bring in an educator or something, do you open those? Yes. For yes. people, so how do we find out when you're gonna have those? We have a list back there um, that I, it's blank at the moment, but if you wanna sign up for Women Who Run With Scissors friends and family list, okay. just give me your, your name and your email address and I'll put you on the list. Um, and we're happy to invite people. And sometimes they're coming from quite a distance and staying in a hotel. And frankly, there again, I've always thought, you know, when we were a group of like 10, we just said, we're gonna do this. And we stuck our neck out and we used the quilt art group, which was out there, you know, online, um, kind of to, to get our news out a little bit and just said, we're bringing in this teacher, this is the class, we're gonna take care of the lunches, 
um, you know, and, and when you're talking about bringing in a national or an international teacher, that's really powerful. And when you get to pick those people um, and then share that with other members of the community, that's amazingly fun. So, so our, our impact of men artists is really to come in as paid presenters and educators for our um, for our Green Bay Art Colony. So again, according to the original founding rules, it was a women's only art group. So when I tell, I'm currently president for that group as well, and I say, I didn't make the rules. We're honoring the legacy. And in fact, we use the, our opening exhibit right now at the Neville is called The Legacy Continues. So within that context though, we are so aware that we have such depth of talent, both male and female. And we have a lot of male presenters. Kelly Bresnan's come in, um, uh, Gregory Fredericks come in. And we've had a lot of presenters, both levels. Um, so although we are a closed group as well, we are not limited to numbers. We're very much encouraging fine artists to gather together. And as a result, some people will say, well, how do I get experience exhibiting if I've, I feel comfortable with my art, but I've never had my own exhibit? So I think as a resource for all of us, and I, you know, I appreciate the fact that we do know each other, but there are times that someone would come to Green Bay Art Colony and say, here's my work, and yet I've never exhibited. It's our honor to be able to say, hey, did you know that the um, Arts Unlimited group takes artists of all levels and they have an annual show at the art garage we connect them with that group to gain experience exhibiting and then come back to us so it sounds a little bit like there's a closed mentality but that's you know you do have your mission and back to what stacy was saying your mission is whatever the purpose of your group is that doesn't mean there aren't other groups that you would thrive in and then we would network across each other again. Um, last year, the Artisan Center, NWTC, sponsored a collaborative show amongst instructors and um, students at the Neville. It's awesome to see people of diverse mediums come together on one piece of art. And even within the Green Bay Art Colony, we often have a, a portion of our exhibit that is a collaborative. It's like, if I was gonna work with a photographer, I might just choose Lisa. <laughs> um, so it's, it's awesome to see our art collaborate together. And then I'm still gonna give a little shout out and thanks back for Mosaic's policy of Cultural Corner, which brings together all levels of our community of arts. So if you're in an arts organization, and I'm gonna say um, evergreen quilters, right? You may not either have the depth of inventory at home to carry yourself in a booth alone. You may not wanna financially outlay the booth cost, and you certainly may not wanna stock it or um, what do you call it when you attend your own booth for the weekend. My, my brain's just lost that one word. Attend your booth, I guess, for a three-day event. Through the power of an arts organization, you can apply to have a booth at Artie Gras, at Art Street. Caliber of artists and guests there is awesome. But then you get a chance to exhibit and you get the benefit of someone, you know, pulling together talents and time and resources and all of a sudden everybody's benefiting. So I just can't say enough that as a new member of coming to Green Bay, I'm kind of like Stacy and everybody else who didn't grow up here, probably all of you grew up here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when you come into town, you think, where is the art scene? And we're getting better with social media. We're getting better through places like NWTC and the Art Garage and the Neville helping us establish where these art groups are. The member list and the um, member services through Mosaic, word of mouth. And you know, networking with each other, we are our own best communication source. To kind of follow up on the variety of artists that are here, and we've got this overwhelming <laughs> group of uh, uh, fibers people, which I love, by the way. Uh, but I just wanted to say, you know, the Wisconsin visual artists, you know, we, we are all kinds of art. We're painters, we're sculptors, we're, 
woodworkers, we're fiber artists, we're mixed media. So it's a little bit of everything. So um, as much as I love fiber, I love really so many different things, and so many of us do, even if that's not what we're doing. Um, our group really has a little bit of everything, so you'll have an exposure. We're not a closed group. Um, if you join, you are, you could be juried in to be at a professional level or an associate's level. It doesn't make any difference what level you're at. You will be a part of everything we're doing no matter what level you're at. So you can uh, push yourself to be a professional if that's what you want. But if it's not important to you, you just want to be networking with people doing things that you do, um, it's a great way to find out what's going on. And we're really pushing the social media because in this area, people are coming from all over the place. We can't always drive uh, half an hour, an hour to get to a meeting, but we really like to push our newsletter, our Facebook page to be able to connect with people um, through social media, especially when we can't always be at a meeting. So it's a very eclectic group, different levels of accomplishments, which is nice because if you want to have someone mentor you in as to how do I do my first exhibit, how do I enter a show, someone in our group might have be really experienced doing that and say, hey, listen, let me show you how that works. And let's take a look at what it means if you get in or what if you don't get into a show? So what? Keep working. It's not a big deal. You know, we've all failed, we've all succeeded, and it's all okay. We just keep doing what we love, and that's the key. So we're kind of an eclectic group, which we love, and that's one of the benefits to being a part of this organization. But again, like I said earlier, I'm also a member of a lot of other little bits and pieces just to have that specific too, so it's always a nice thing. So uh, just to kind of re reiterate that diversity that we have in the room and there are organizations for all of them um, and, and you know, we can network to find out <coughs> where we can send you to uh, beyond the needle, needle and thread which is all, so all Jane, good. So is, is Jane, it's a monthly membership? Mem monthly, we, we meet on you typically Tuesdays. Okay. Um, and if you, uh, you can join and you'll get the information or just obviously come and contact me. I can be a, a good liaison to get you into the first meeting. And we're really encouraging, and I think for some of you who have these organizations, we want younger people to join. We want new interests, we want new ideas, we want that new energy. And we have a good diverse group right now, but we're pushing it. Because um, some organizations I've gone to, and I'm fairly new to the art scene in this area, there's a lot of older folks, which I loved, but I want a little bit of everything. I want energy from every level. The younger folks are coming in with a completely different way of looking and producing their art, and it's fabulous. And yet they can maybe learn from some of the things that us older folks have gone through. And it's a matter of collaboration, and I think it's really important that all of our organizations do a little bit of everything, and that we bring in all generations to our artwork. It's really important to connect, so. Are there other questions tonight? for anyone, I invite you to stay around, stick around. I know there are some handouts that all of you brought, so please um, grab different things. Talk with our panel um, casually, grab some food and beverage, and um, thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.